Let's take a look how we can create our own categories and file content away in virtual folders inside Das Studio. Hello everyone, I'm Jay and on this channel we want to show you how to become better 3D artists with Das Studio. On today's episode I want to show you how you can group content together into your own personal categories, which is to say group it into virtual folders that make it easier for you to find bits and pieces. Let me give you an example. This is a question I get uh, every once in a while and it usually comes out in the form of can I take existing items for products and copy and paste them together into my own folders, that sort of thing. And that brings up a huge can of worms because it makes it very difficult for people to do that. And Das Studio has this built-in option that's called categories. So for that, you've got to be on the content library tab here. You can collapse this whole thing down here where it says Das Studio formats, collapse this down and have a look under categories here. So this is essentially a way of the database to take care of what object belongs with what. Das have done this here under the default section. And this is a huge section that you can tap into and filter things out. Like for example, hair and hair means these are hairs, but you can also go and filter this from body hair, which gives you anything from, you know, the Das house cat to cat ears to arm hair and body hair or facial hair like beards and stuff like that. But you can extend this into either the default section or your completely your own structure if you like. So if I collapse this here, let me show you what I mean by that. I can right click here onto the categories tab and then I can say create subcategory. And I'm just going to give it some test names that we get the principle right. So maybe this one here, I'll, I'll call this test. <laughs> and then I have my own section down here into which I could add other sections to it. Let's say I create another subcategory here and I'll call that, I don't know, test two. Just, just for now that we get the principle right. So in here, I can now, this is essentially my own category structure now. And I could go back, say to the smart content, for argument's sake, and I can go into my figure section and let's say Victoria needs to be in here. I can go to an item, right click and say categorize. And this brings up another little menu that lets me add a reference of my selected item here to my own category section. So in my case, I'm going to put it into maybe test and test two. Just tick that box and then that's there. Hit accept. And then nothing much happens here. I can go now back to my content library and see it looks like there's nothing in here. But if I right click and say refresh, then Victoria shows up there. So this is kind of good news. If I wanted to group Victoria and a couple of clothing items together, let's just maybe let's just do that. If I go out and say, well, perhaps I'll go now into the wardrobe section and I say I want the summer bikini in there as well. I head over to wardrobe and maybe the bikini fit all needs to go in here. I'll say categorize. And once again, I'll click on this and then put her into there. And then perhaps with that, I also want to group a hair. So I'll add a hair in here. Maybe let's say the curly top up to once again, right click and categorize. Do that and navigate to my particular category section here. And then when I go back, refresh this, I can see that all these items are now in one conveniently findable location that can follow whatever you need it to be. So this is the power of that. It's, you know, power and responsibility, they kind of go hand in hand. So it's kind of up to you to find a way that best works for you. So one example that worked well for me in the past was that I had one category called characters into which I have sub scenes with my closed and pre-configured characters that I can just go load in here. It doesn't just work for content files. It also works for things that I've created like sub scenes or post files that you've got in custom libraries here. So I have one category for that, but then I have another category for my locations. So I have one sub scene here that would be not instead of test, it would be called locations. And in there I would then have maybe the castle and the cinema and maybe the coffee shop. And in these things, I'd have the things that need to be loaded inside these locations. And that was very easy for me to find content and make it available. So to load these things, then it's just as simple as double clicking any of these items that you've got in your categories, and then it loads that up. So one question then also that kind of goes hand in hand with, well, what happens if I have to reinstall Das Studio? Will my user content not completely be overwritten? And 
It's true, which is why there's a handy way to export your user data here. And the way to do that is on the Smart Content tab here. You can either use this hamburger icon here in the top and go to Content DB Maintenance, or you can right click on that tab and then the same menu comes up content db maintenance and there is a section here that says export user data and when you do that custom categories will all be saved out and you can restore them later but where jay where are they stored i need to know i need to have that fine to put it in dropbox i need to make it safe and you're so right you're so right this is a little bit difficult to find out so let me show you where you find the location so if i just go and hit accept the dialogue's going to go away and it's not going to prompt me for a location there so let me show you where that's saved it is the first mapped content directory in your content library where that's stored. So to find that out, let's go to the content library tab here under Dash Studio formats. And the first one in the list here, this is it. This is currently on, on this system, it's my Dash Studio library, but it could be another directory. So I could have put outfits at the top, whatever is configured on your system. This is the folder where that user data is saved into. And there's an easy way to find it on your system by right clicking on it and going to browse to folder location. And that will bring up a Windows Explorer or Mac Finder window with that very location. In it, there's a folder called runtime. And in that, there's a folder called support. And in that, there's often a bunch of other files in here. And one of which is called user data and this is it this is the one that i've just exported and that's the file that you probably want to keep safe and that is the one that can also be brought back and basically restore all your categories in fact while i'm here let me show you that as well let me go and just close this down just make sure that when you restore it in the runtime support library of this mapped folder that's where your user data is and let me just go and show you how to delete these types of categories as well here. If I don't want to see this anymore, you can go and right click on it and just say delete. And that dialog comes up and says, yes, there we go. And test, we're going to delete as well. Don't do this with the default section here because Dash Studio kind of relies on this under the hood. So leave default intact, but my custom data is no longer here. So to bring that back then, once again, on the smart content tab, I right click content DB maintenance, and then I click here under re-import metadata. That's uh, another script that gets queued under the hood. I hit accept and that brings up this scary dialog here, which offers to re-import basically all the metadata. I don't really need to do that. So I'm going to untick all my products and I'm just going to use the user data here, which Dash Studio has found conveniently here. If I go and hit accept, it takes a second to process. And then if I head back to my content library, there's my test category, my test two, and there's all the products I put previously in there. So if you needed to bring this back on a different system. This is how to do that. I hope this was helpful and I hope I will see you in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.